All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for waiting. I think now you should be able to see me. I'm just having some technical issues, but I believe it's uh, fixed now. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for waiting. Um, and boom, super excited to be here. Um, and everyone, boom, big round of applause. And we have a design MBA. Everyone, uh, just thank you so much for um, just waiting, right? So um, the audio should be good because it seems to be working on my end. Audio on, okay, perfect, sweet. Uh, nice, just making sure. So this is uh, one of the things that comes with live streams. It's like when you're a designer, um, you have to deal with this last minute things, especially with clients and all these things. You have to be really ready that, you know, like things can go wrong, shit's gonna go wrong when you're preparing to clients and stuff, no matter what you do. So without further ado, um, I'm really excited to kick off today's stream. And yes, Joshin, uh, whereas I was traveling, so I was supposed to travel uh, to Chicago, but that plan is on hold for another month. Um, yes, uh, the camera is going a little bit in and out of uh, focus. Um, yes, but I'm gonna like make sure that it's a little bit like steady now. I think I've just fixed that, it's me being steady. So today, um, this, um, topic that I want to talk about is very, very important to me. A lot of people have told me about this, which is what if you have a portfolio? What if you have a design portfolio? Number one, that you don't have any good projects. So let's say you're a designer, you're working in the field, but then you worked at companies and I've been there where the projects you worked on, they're just like, not that good. Like you don't feel proud to talk about them publicly, right? That's one issue that I get here a lot. Like, hey, I'm working at this big company, but the project I'm working on, we just change the color. We just change the color. So I don't want to talk about it publicly because there's not much to it. Another criteria that I hear a lot is this, with people who are trying to break into the design field and they've taken some course online, they have uh, taken part in a boot camp. But the thing is, their project is, it's kind of like just a boot camp project. It's just like an online project that they've done, right? It's nothing concrete. It's not like something that they can say that, oh, you know what? I actually designed this. It's just something that they've done. In either cases, the situation is this. You have a portfolio, you have your design portfolio and the projects are not up to par. You don't feel confident and you're not worried that how do I get a new job or how do I actually get a job in the design field? And I've been this, I worked at companies where the projects I worked on, they were, I mean, it's not, they were just like very okay, man. Like they, they, there was not much I could do there. There's not much I could uh, really do something and change it. And I was honestly not proud because whatever reasons, the company project was just shit. And it, even though I gave them a good design, the final product was not good. So I was not happy about it. And then the second bucket, again, as I said, is you just don't have good projects because you're just finishing an online course. You bought like a $5 course online and you're like, okay, well, I don't have any projects. Here's my answer. The answer to this is you need some real life projects. What do I mean by real life projects? Whether you're working at a company and let's say that you have some NDA, you're working at one of the biggest design companies in India, the U S but they have an NDA where you can't talk about your project online, right? You can't publicly say I'm working on this. You can't. It's a problem. Or like I said, the bootcamp, you, you're not proud of it. Either ways, you need to have a real life project. So what is a real life project? Very simple. It's two types. One is, let's say you have a best friend that's getting married or is starting his own business and she needs someone to create a website. And you, may, you maybe do it for free. I've done that. I've done the websites for people like my personal trainer who helps me work out. I built this website for free just because he's a good friend, right? So you can do stuff like that and you can position like, Hey, this is my real life project. This is another project I can publicly talk about. Right? So now, because the thing is when you're talking to the, the interviewers, the hiring managers, you can say that this is a freelance project. Like they don't really care whether you made thousand dollars on the project or like 10,000. What they care about is that it's a real person, a real need, and you're solving for that. And this is more effective. This is way more effective than, just taking the Zomato app or the Uber app and just making it green in color just because you thought it'd be kind of cool to redesign it. That's a little bit like, like, you know, like it, it cocky as well, because you're saying that you're smarter than all the hundreds of designers who work at these big companies, right? 
So the first thing is to get a real life project. Look at your friends, family, cousins, sisters, doesn't matter anybody and see if they need help with any of their like business project, anything do it for free. Doesn't matter. Do it for free. And then you can put this project in your portfolio. Now here's the best part because you know them, they're going to give you creative freedom to do whatever you want. Like you decide the branding, you decide the color, you get to decide how this project is going to come out when it comes out. Right? So that's one way you can do it. Way number two is if you don't have any like relatives or friends or anyone that uh, can give you projects. Number two is if you look at my past streams, one was about how do you build professional relationships in the design field, right? In that one, I talked about how you can go to design events, networking meetups and stuff around design and see if you can get some freelance projects from that, right? That's another way. And you can also, what you can do is you can sign up for sites like Fiverr, Upwork, and then get some freelance gigs. And you can do these, some of these gigs to get some more projects. Um, if you're not proud of the price saving portfolio, right? Um, another one is basically that, like I said, like more of like, if you have an, um, if you already have a design job and you're like, okay, I already have a design job, Jay Neil, I already have some projects, but I'm not proud of them. Then you can freelance and do some other projects on the side, right? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this means to have this real life project. And then we, we can take some questions. You guys can ask me your questions and I can dig into that, but I really want to show you something, um, that will help you understand what I'm talking about. So when I was working for some big companies, to be honest, I was working on a lot of these design projects, but I was not proud of them because I was part of this big team that was changing just something very small. And the final design that came out was not good at all too, because of, you know, like technical limitations. And I was not really happy of the work that I had. I was not really happy to show that project to another company and get a job. So what I started doing is I found out what was my passion. So my passion at the time while I was working at these big companies was I really wanted to, um, work on chatbots. So I started building these chatbots for free. I started building these chatbots for free on the side. So for example, in 2017, what I did is I was like, Hey, you know what? Chatbots are really cool. Maybe you want to do something here. So I went out of my way to, um, you know, build these chatbots and, um, and really like, um, reach out to these organizers saying, um, like, Hey, I want to build this chatbot for you for free, right? I'm not going to check any money. I'm anyways attending the design conference. And I just emailed the conference organizer like, Hey Dave, I want to make this chatbot for the conference. I will design it from scratch. I'll build it from scratch. And you know, if you guys would love to have me and they're like, they're like, sure. So this is basically how I started building this portfolio. So now this became a case study of how I collaborated with the organizers. Uh, you know, we, we did design thinking process with them, how I, you know, built the whole thing. Uh, what was my design journey? Like, you know, I'm explaining the whole thought process. Like how did I design for delight? Like what was the outcome? How many people use this product that I designed? And then what I did is I, I, I continued doing it because this was a, an area of passion for me. So I did it again for another conference. I learned a lot from that. And then again, what I did is I did it again for another conference, as you can see right here. So then here, um, again, the same thing. I reached out to the, um, conference organizer. So I, what I did is I actually, uh, showed them that how did I do research for this project? I showed them that, look, I went to the meetup and told everyone that, Hey, I'm going to build a chatbot for the conference. What are some of the questions you guys want answered? So I asked these questions. Um, how did I create the intent? This actually talks to you about my information architecture, my flow, like how did I do this? So this was literally a way for me to kind of like go about, um, you know, like, building this chatbot, and let me quickly share a link to this, uh, final case study. If you guys are interested in seeing that, like, give me one second. Um, but, uh, let's see, this is there. I'm just probably gonna put this here for everyone who's interested to follow along. Check it out. 
So check this out. So right, um, this is the link to it. If you guys want to check it out, this is basically the link to the case study I'm referring to. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through this a little bit in detail. So here it was the same thing. I reached out to the organizers, um, that, Hey, I want to build this chatbot. So I just said, Hey, um, I'm interested in volunteering and building an AI chatbot for the conference as a, as my way of giving back to the community. And I show them like for the past two years, I've, you know, um, deployed this, uh, idea at many conferences. You can see the articles here and they're like, absolutely would love to do this. So then, you know, like I went through this, I created the whole brand guideline for them. Um, I created like, you know, this whole style guide, the design, look at this. Like I created the emoji, this, like I worked with other designers on the team to create this logo that you're seeing here. I created this whole AI Sage personality that answers all these questions. So if you go to a conference and you ask this chatbot, this automated program, a question, when is this taking place? You know, I created this program, designed it that answered all these questions. So this became my real life project. Like you can see my entire thinking here. I, after I did this and you can see like the, the conference team thanking me for, um, doing this whole thing. So now the main point here is that, um, why did I do this? Right? The question at this point is going to be like, well, this is good and stuff, but like, why did you do all this? Well, the thing is now these three times that I build these chatbots, I would, I created case studies on medium. So anytime I was looking for a new job, I could share these links and be like, Hey, check this out. This is some of the work I've done because this is public. Like I did this all for free. I asked each one of them in the conference organizers, like, can I openly talk about this project? They're like, absolutely. So my number one criteria was that I want to have a portfolio project that I am proud of that I can openly share. There's no non-disclosure agreement with the company that you can not talk about this in public. None of that. So that was one of the reasons why I did that. And then what happened as a result of this is when I started talking about this in public and giving talks about this at conferences, I got some freelance contracts literally to build chatbots, to design chatbots. So that was something I didn't plan for, but it gave me more freelance opportunities. It helped me um, even um, get some job offers as a chatbot designer at some companies that I never thought about. But my point is if you are working at a company and you don't like the design projects you're working on there. You don't want to put them in your portfolio. You're not proud of them or you are, um, uh, a designer or trying to be a designer, trying to break into the design field and you don't have good projects that you're proud of. Get real life projects, get real life projects. That is the way that you want to go about this. I mean, there's so many people that out there that need some help. Like somebody in the chat here could be launching a website. They need some help volunteer for people that you trust and are inspired. I'm not saying do it for anybody or if it's friends or family, right? This is your opportunity to create a project, right? And everybody, yes, like the video. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm going to be doing this like every Friday, these live streams. So, um, smash that goddamn like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So Josh, so good question here. Um, and the question basically is like, how do you document these things? Like, is there like a process? So let me just quickly take a water break. Um, so the way I go about this is Josh and I want to tell a story. I really want to tell a story, right? It's not just about, Hey, look, I did this. I want to tell a story. Like, why did I do this? Why did I do it? So let me show you how this works like in real life. Like uh, just using my example. So if you go here, if you go here, all right. So when you look at this case study, my thought process is more of like, okay, what is this? This is basically designing a delightful AI personality. So what I'm talking about is as a designer, how do you design an AI personality? And then right off the bat, I'm showing a photo of my work that this is what an AI personality looks like AI Sage. So now whoever is the hiring manager can know what it's about. Oh, powered by IBM Watson. Okay. So now this person knows that I'm the designer. I'm using some machine learning and AI stuff. And then, um, 
right off the bat, I kind of make it into a story like, you know, um, what's going on. And then right off, and then I say, what is the problem statement? Right. And the problem statement is basically the conference organizers are so busy organizing a conference. They don't have time to just keep on answering these common questions. So what if we could design a chatbot or a software program that can answer these questions? Then I talk about what did I do? So while I reached out to the organizers and explained to them that, Hey, I want to do this for free. Look at this. I mentioned that I am interested in volunteering. Why? Because I want to give back to the community, right? Then I talk about them. Like, what is the first thing that I do in this? Well, I need to create a, a, a style guide, just like design, design style guides, chatbots have voice style guide. So I explained to them that this is the style guide that I created. Like, what is the chatbot going to be? Is it going to be casual? Who's our targeted audience? What is the tone going to be? Is it casual? Um, is it like super chill? Uh, what does it not do? Like it doesn't use the word ain't it's not sarcastic. Um, it doesn't use these kind of words. Uh, what does it do? It, it gets to the point directly. Right. Um, and then I created this like user persona, but literally for the personality. Right. And then I explained to them that what is the situation? Like the question is this, this is the chatbot reply. Then I show them, this is how I'm doing it. But then here as a designer, how am I bringing in delight? I mean, even programmers can build a chatbot. What is difference? What is the difference being a designer? Well, I'm saying that this is where I prove as a designer, what value am I bringing as a developer? I can just code this. But as a designer, I use these emojis for ticket. There's an emoji for location. There's an emoji for conference website. There's an emoji. Look at this for help request. I've got something here. There's a way to directly contact a human being instead of a, instead of just a program. I designed this purposefully. I designed the help menu. If you click on command list, you get all the options. So this is how I'm saying. And the most important thing is I also talk about machine learning. If I use like a, a program to do machine learning, what was that program like? How did I incorporate machine learning into this? And finally, what was the outcome? The outcome was that I actually built this, the conference organizers love this and boom. So that's how I really document um, the whole process that I went through. So that is one way you want to tell a story. You want to talk about what was your thinking when you were doing it instead of just like, Oh, look, I built a chatbot. Oh, look, here's the photo. Here's what had happened. Instead of focusing on just showing what you did, focus on why you did it. That will make a big difference. Absolutely. If you are a beginner, the design is not going to be good. That's fine. Um, and if you look at that link I sent you, that was my fourth iteration. Like if you look at the first chatbot that I built, it was so basic. There was no design at all. It was just like, if you enter this word, it will say this, that's all it was. But the thing is after the fourth, fifth, sixth try, it just gets better and better. Um, even if you don't think your design skills are good, you're, that's why you're volunteering for free for someone. That's why you're volunteering for free to, for someone to just take a chance on you. And they're like, well, I don't want to spend money on this. So let's say your, um, best friend wants a website for their new restaurant they're opening. And right now they don't have the budget to open a new, like hire a designer. So you're doing it. You're doing the best you can do. And one of the things you can easily do is like, in my case, I used like, I don't know how to code these chatbots. I don't. So I used an existing tool that let you build these chatbots without much coding. So the excuse that if my design skills are not good, but should I still volunteer is not valid because you can easily use tools like Squarespace, Webflow, teach yourself. You can even buy a template. You can even buy a free template or pay a few bucks and get a paid template and use that. There's no excuse. The point is you're showing that you're willing to work and learn. You're willing to work for learning. Who's going to say no to that? Right? Like all these people, they were like one of the organizers. I told them the same thing. Like, Hey, I said, Hey, you know what? I'm really new to this. What if this doesn't work out? You know what he said to me? He said, listen, you're doing this for free. Like you don't have to do this. You're doing this for free. So just enjoy the experience. Don't worry too much about thinking about, is it going to be great and how is it going to go and stuff? Just focus on doing it. And that's what I'm going to tell you. Just 
focus on the learning. And that's why you don't want to volunteer for something really, really big scale because you just haven't proven yourself. Start somewhere small, somewhere very, very small, prove yourself. So like that last conference had like thousand attendees. So before actually volunteering for them, I had all these other conferences I did this for. So I knew what was going to be like, right? So think about that. So how can you do the UX part? Absolutely. I mean, the only way is by learning. Like you're not going to know until you try, right? If you do the, if you build a website for the first time, if you design a website for the first time or an app for the first time, you're not going to know what the exact process is. You can learn guides, but by doing it is when you're going to learn, right? So you have to put yourself in there and really like start small and then just enjoy the process and learn along the way. Like if you're doing this for a relative, for a friend, for someone just for free, a little bit small, part-time, there may not be a process you're following or you don't even know exactly how you're doing the UX part. But by doing it, you'll learn something. You'll learn something from the mistake and you'll be like, okay, this is what I gotta do it. And then the next time you approach another client, you know how to like design a contract, you know how to do all these things. Absolutely. Start small, so even if you fail, it's okay. There's not a lot of things. Um, and just enjoy the process, yes. Which is why I'm recommending to everyone, when you start with friends and family or someone that you know, there's a higher chance that even if you fail, they're not gonna penalize you. They're not gonna penalize you and be like, hey, why did you, like, why did you not do this? Why did you not uh, do it this way? It's not professional yet. So starting small with friends and family or some coworkers that you know is a good way to start or volunteering for design communities. Somewhere where it's like free, so even if you like fuck up, it's okay. It's a learning point. I rather that you fuck up in these small experiences and learn rather than taking on a big project and then be like, oh my God, I shouldn't have done this. So to summarize everything we talked about today, and yeah, bring like more questions in whatever questions you have about like, what is it that you are not happy about with your real life project, right? If anyone has a portfolio they want to share, I can review it here as well and give you some pointers. I can do that as well. If you, if you feel comfortable, share that portfolio link in the chat and I'll bring it up. Um, my point is don't blame the circumstances. Don't blame the fact that you're not a designer. Don't blame the fact that, you know, you have not getting freelance projects. Don't make excuses right? You have the power of internet with you. There's so many ways you can literally be doing real life projects. Literally, there's like no excuse at all, right? Um, this is just some examples I'm showing how I go about getting real life projects, but even something small as like, if you are, um, if you um, see a website that can be improved, create some improvements, right? I'll show you another example of like how this plays out in real life. So if you are going out and about, if you're just out and about, like just thinking about uh, what, what websites can I improve? Um, just pulling up his website. So let's say that I'm going about this. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen real quick. So I'm also big into crypto by the way. So maybe in the future, if you guys are interested, I can do some more sessions on designing for crypto. Um, but you know, I went to this website. I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. What's going on? Uh, let's look at this. What can we improve? So here we are. Right, so we're here, um, and then this is what is going on, and um, I think there was a way for them to give me a demo. I think uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm right here right now, right? So I'm here, and I can see that this is their interface. So what can I improve here? So what I did was basically I said, okay. This is an application I came across as a designer. Can I really change something? Can I do something that um, to improve this? So what I'm doing now is actually I am going to show you my improvements that I did in Figma and I actually emailed that to the founder. I actually emailed this to the founder. So while this is loading, yeah, there we go. So here, um, yeah, there we go. So what I did is I quickly opened up my Figma and I said, you know what? I'm going to um, find few small things to improve. 
like some alignment issues, something small. So one of the criteria that I have here, whenever I find a website that it can be improved, maybe like a startup or um, an existing website, I, I make sure that it only takes me like about a day, max a weekend to get it out. I'm not trying to redesign the entire uh, website. My goal is not that. My goal is very simple. Something very small to give this to the founder, to the design team. If they like it, awesome. Then we can start a conversation like, would you want me to do something more? Uh, but I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to like, you know, redesign everything. And then they're like, oh, we've already got this plan. We've already got this figured out. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. So that's just one thing I'll say to you that before you just go down that rabbit hole, make sure you definitely do that. So, um, okay. So the first thing that I did for them was I said, before the way they had it was there's just too much spacing here. So I said, you know what? The spacing needs to be reduced. So I actually reduced the spacing here as you can see. Then one of the other things that they had going on was they had, um, they had a lot of uh, settings icons. So what I mean by that is they had like settings here, settings here, settings here. And I said, why, why does the settings have to be like that? Right? And then you, and you click on this, there's more settings that pop up. My design recommendation was we remove the settings from here and we move all of them here under one roof. And I show them that when you click on this, you see all the settings in one page. And then when you click here, you can see this. Now, is this a perfect design of this arrow? No, I just picked up any arrow that I saw in Figma and that was it. My goal was just to show that, hey, you know what? I can create a much cleaner look here by moving everything over here. That's literally what my um, goal there was. So um, my point to um, all of this is that I'm just designing this. I'm just designing this to create these real life uh, projects out there. These real life projects that I can add to my portfolio. It can be, like I said, a volunteering project you did. It can be like a freelance project. It can be um, something, a website you're seeing, like a startup website, or let's say you're going to eat, uh, let's say a pizza at a nearby place to your house and they have a very bad website. Redesign it, right? Make some improvements to it. That can be a real life project you can put in your portfolio. So let's see what questions we've got so far. There's no fixed time, man. I wish I could answer this question for everyone. Like how much time will it take for you to like land a UX design job if you start now? It's up to you. It's about how much effort you put in. Like how many real life projects you get, how quickly do you learn? It's totally up to you. There's no set time frame. But instead of focusing on when can I get a job in UX design as soon as possible, focus on how can I learn? Because even if you do somehow get a job and you don't know the skills or the concepts, you're gonna get fired quickly. So don't do that. Focus on learning first. I'm going to keep this in mind. Uh, this is just one example of like how you can design for crypto, but this is something definitely um, I'm going to think about in the coming weeks, probably doing a small session on crypto. Like how do you redesign and stuff? And then maybe we can go in detail like this case study that I have that I showed you. Maybe I can go in detail of how to like design for crypto and stuff. Yes, exactly. Like that's the part I haven't showed up. Like I did design, that whole thing that I showed you and I, I sent it to the founder. Like, hey, like, you know, this is what I did. So that follow-up is very, very important. Like, like, hey, I did this and then boom. So my point to everyone here today um, is that don't make excuses. If you're not proud of your portfolio, if you're not happy with it, I understand. I've been there. But there's so many things you can do. Like I talked about, you can either um, like literally attend a design event somewhere near you. Watch my past streams on how you find these events and stuff. Attend a design event and say that you work for free. You want to contribute. You want to help out. Right. That's one way. Um, reach out to your friends and family. Next time you're going to a wedding, going to like a meet up with some cousins, see what they're doing. See if you can help one of them out by building a small website, um, helping them with some app design on the side. You don't have to code it. You don't have, you have to design everything from scratch. Use templates. It's okay. You're helping out family. Mm. 
you know, I'm getting really excited. The crypto session will be really cool. Um, and I think, I think I want to get like a few more examples maybe uh, lined up before we do like crypto session. I think there's just some stuff that um, I'm, I'm thinking about. Um, like what I'm thinking about doing is maybe doing like a Twitter thread first about stuff like uh, what are some of the best design patterns out there when it comes to crypto, right? So I'm thinking of doing that first, getting some feedback from it. And then uh, based on that, uh, maybe doing a session. So this is more value for all of you. And by the way, you guys can um, follow me on Twitter. Um, boom. And then as always, I do have uh, a free email course that you all can um, take part in, level up your design career. So this is basically my free email course, which is like a seven day email course, which will help you level up your design career. So if you haven't, definitely enroll in the course. Um, and then let me just share the link to this for everyone in the chat. Boom. So you guys can uh, sign up for this. Um, and then once again, like if you haven't subscribed to my channel, definitely uh, subscribe to it um, since you guys are watching because I'm going to be doing a lot of these sessions coming up and I need your help to like spread this message out there. Like as many people as can get it, that would be um, dope. Um, and um, so please do subscribe, smash that like button. Um, Monish, um, that uh, building, so the design MBA one, it's just a generic image. If it's my personal picture, the profile picture in the YouTube, that was just like a wall, like that was just a colorful wall, which is why I just took a photo there. So very good question. Exchanging money for time versus exchanging value for value. Which one would you pick? Is it dumb not to talk about money? Who, man. It depends on every situation. It depends on every situation because when you have experience, right, you can easily trade your time for money. Meaning you have experience, you've built a lot of apps, websites, designed them. You can say like, look, I'll charge you this much and that's it. So you're exchanging now literally your time for money, which is fair. And you know, and hopefully that project is something you even care about. So it's the best of both worlds. Like you get paid, you also care about the project. Boom. Doesn't always happen early on in your career because you haven't had that career capital built up yet. Um, but early on in my career, I definitely would not optimize always for money. I would optimize more for learning, for value, um, more about like mentorship, learning about stuff rather than uh, trying to just get the money. Because I know that once I get the experience, I can always switch and be like, okay, now I think I value more money exchanging uh, my time for money rather than just exchanging value for value. Now, I still do the exchanging of value for value. Like I'll do this for free. I'll, but there's some end goal, like, like, you know, like I'm getting from it. Like, for example, like if I'm doing like a free website design for some crypto founder, like I'm learning a lot from that crypto founder about the crypto scene and stuff. So even though I may not get paid, I'm building a portfolio, I'm learning. So my whole life, I will continue to exchange value for value or exchange my time to get value and then to get learning and stuff. I'll always do that because money can always be made later on. But these things like the learnings, the value, the connections, these things are invaluable to me because they will change my trajectory. So for me, it's always about the long term game. So in the short term, yeah, I mean, like if the money's not exactly the way I want it, it's fine because I know in the long term, if I'm focusing on value, if I'm focusing on uh, education and, and, and knowledge, it will work out. Thank you so much, Swapnil. I know this is public accountability, but what I am committing to all of you live here is I'm gonna keep doing um, these live sessions every Friday till the end of this year, unless something drastic comes my way, but I really wanna keep doing that. Um, so that's basically a commitment. And you know, it's just like, it's an experiment. It's for me to see like by end of the year, where am I? right? Where am I if I keep doing this for the end of the year? And you guys are helping me, right? Like when I started this, it was basically like about maybe 200 subs. I don't even know exactly, but it's like right now at 338. So you guys are like helping me every uh, week, trying to like giving me feedback and stuff. So it's, it's keeping me going. 
And this is the same concept I want you to apply to everything else we're talking about. Be consistent, right? One real life project you may not get, you tried, you reached out to the founder, you reached out, you wanted, it didn't happen. Be consistent. Be really, really consistent. Hit them up. Like one thing I'll tell all of you on this, on this uh, you know, live stream is, even if you do this projects for free, you do all this for free, you're like, Jay Neil, I did this all this for free, man. Like you, I could have used that time to watch some episode on Netflix. Anything you do like this, like real life projects, doing this for free, volunteering and stuff, it will never go waste. Because you're still learning from it. You're always learning from it. You're always learning from it. So the number one thing is you're never gonna like lose because you're always learning from it. And even years later, like this thing that I created, that I showed you was in 2017. It's 2021 and four years later, I'm still able to show that to you, it's out there. It's never gonna go to waste. So I would say is don't worry too much about, um, that, oh, how do I, uh, you know, get money out of this? Is it going to be worth it or not? Don't worry about it. Just focus in on the now and then it will work itself out in the future, right? And glad to hear that all of you enjoyed today's session. It's been a blast for me. Um, I do have some ideas I want to cover, but um, really quickly, just definitely let me know some ideas. Like, what do you guys want me to cover on in the future session so I can keep a note of these topics and trying to like schedule these sessions around those things as well. Because like getting that feedback is really, really important. So the reason I keep repeating the same thing again and again and again is I want to drill this thing. Literally, I want it from my brain to your brain, right? I want to drill this in. Volunteer, focus on the long-term game, right? get real life projects. There's no excuse in today's day and age where you can say, I'm not proud of my design portfolio. If you're not proud of your portfolio, fucking take some action. Don't just be like, you know, like, oh, you know, like, uh, just don't get projects, don't have a job at Swiggy's, I can't do it. Like, no. Do these things where companies like Swiggy, um, even the top of the best of the best companies, like Apple, they come to you like, hey, we like what you're doing in the work. So yes. And to sum it up, yes, only when you look back, you will see like at that point, I did not really know like why this stuff I was doing for free made sense. But now I'm able to see like, oh wow, you know what? Now if I want to like share something public to someone of how I think, if I want a job as a chatbot designer, I can always point to that portfolio. Literally when I connect with recruiters, they're like, can you send me a link to your portfolio? But then a lot of my portfolios is all this NDA stuff that I can't talk about in public. So I'll just say, here's my public portfolio. Check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Yes. So these are some good topics. I do have some sessions planned in the future about imposter syndrome. And I'm going to make a note of this. Literally, I'm going to literally make a note of this. I believe, um, uh, I do have, a uh, literally cause like there is a, so this is my live stream stuff like, um, well, yeah. So these are just basically topics that I have. So here, literally what I'm doing is I'm going to add here like salary negotiation. So salary negotiation, I already have it on there. So I'm going to schedule that soon, but stay on the lookout. But once again, everybody, thank you so much for joining today's session. And most of all, thank you for bearing with the technical difficulties. Uh, my, it, it's figured out in the end, but thank you so much. Namaste. See you all in the next stream.